Indian professor suspended on for question on Hindutva and fascism similarities. So when I talk about this news, I am going to use the word Yahtzee or Yahtzeeism to discuss the really bad ideology from World War II. I think we all know what we're talking about. It starts with an N. I can't say the real word because YouTube freaks out, but just so everyone knows what I'm saying, that's that's the code word. Okay, moving on. On May 6th, uh, Waka Farooq Kute, an assistant professor at Sharda University in Uttar Pradesh, was suspended for a test that asked students about similarities between fascism, Yahtzeeism, and right-wing Hindutva. The question in the test asked the students, quote, do you find in any similarities between fascism slash Yahtzeeism and Hindu right-wing, parentheses, Hindu? Elaborate with arguments, end quote. The university issued an official statement through Twitter announcing Waka's suspension. The university statement emphasized the possible public outcry that may have that may arise from the issue. A source privy to the matter spoke to a local media and stated that Kute had no intention to quote hurt anybody's sentiments and that he had an expressed an apology over the issue. The University Grants Commission, or UGC, India's higher education regulatory agency, demanded an explanation from the university. Even though a spokesperson from the Sharda University mentioned that there was no complaints filed by students, UGC's statement to Sharda University contradicted this spokesperson's statement. UGC stated, needless to say, that asking students such a question is against the spirit and ethos of our country, which is known for inclusivity and homogeneity. I mean, if you disagree, just... Tell them, like, just argue about it. What the hell? You can't compare things anymore? This is, like, such an insane infringement on academic freedom. You can't even... This is insane to me. You cannot say, mm. here, here is a political ideology, and here is another political ideology. Is there similarities? Give me your argument. It's well, not I even mean insane way or another it's just putting them together in a sentence and saying compare and contrast you got wait, fired wait. over I, this i have a defense for what they're doing actually i oh, think what? they're agreeing with him and they're showing it they're displaying it <laughs> they're like yes you're right we it's are reverse fascist. psychology <laughs> no you we are right we are fascists and the, guess what we're gonna let do me show you how do. <laughs> let me show you what fascists do <laughs> As fascists that we are, we have no tolerance for anybody trying to criticize us. So <laughs> this is exhibit A. <laughs> I can't think of. So basically, they accused him of being anti-national by putting this question on a test. What? Wait, that is very fascist of them. Yeah. And Especially that's also like that's also a very like hot button thing to just like slap that label on someone in India. Like that's not. Taken <laughs> Shuk is saying, LOL, they just proved that they're Yahtzees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so maybe maybe they were just trying to make their teacher's point. Maybe that was their intention. They're like, yes, this, this person is right. And what is this? This is an, um, if, is this man going to get into any trouble beyond? I mean, it's already pretty sad. It's so difficult to be a teacher in India these days. Like, we have had, just last week, we also had somebody that was suspended from university simply for asking whether Rama was a good guy in the story. Also, just posing an academic question, saying, yeah. hey, let's adjust the lens through which we look at this issue. If we put on a different lens, might it change how we think about this mythology, the story? What if we switched the roles of villain and hero on its head? Here they're saying, so to me, an equivalent to this would be like um, in American college being like, oh, um, does the does the era of manifest destiny in American history um, meet the standards of cultural or real genocide? Explain. Give me, give me your argument. Yes or no. Mm. And someone being fired for that saying you're against our you're against our country. You're sowing discord. You're against inclusivity. Because that's like what the part of the statement said. It doesn't make any sense. Right. R read what Gage in American is saying, because that might be. 
Uh, Gajan is saying, according to his forehead mark, he's a Hindu of the Shakta sect, if I'm not mistaken. Um, although Stormy is saying in the live chat that the person in the thumbnail is actually a reformed Hindutva dude. His grandfather was crazy Hindutva, but this guy is liberal compared to Modi. So I think our editor might need to update the thumbnail, actually. But mm. um, wait, there was a part of the statement I wanted to read. Let me find this real quickly. Oxymoron is saying, well, he's going to grade students, so that could be a problem. What do you Why? mean? Why? How? It, it's engaging. It's a thought process. People are it's inviting people to think about things. Like, just because he asked the question doesn't necessar necessarily belie his own political persuasion i mean even if it does it's okay i mean i've been to in university i've been have had teachers who had certain biases but they were transparent about it but they also encouraged us to think independently regarding it regardless of the teacher's own biases right like i have had um teachers that were more i don't know for example socialist but they were also very good at being a good, doing a good um, steel man for their capitalist position. I mean, like, even though they had their own biases, they were very good teachers and they encouraged us to think independently and didn't punish us for us disagreeing with the teacher's takes. So you could, I mean, you could have your biases and still be a good teacher, you know, even if you're displaying what your biases are. Oh, wait, no, here it is. Okay, this is, this is, this is so crazy. The university statement emphasized the possible public outcry that may arise from the issue. Quote, the university regrets that such an issue has taken place that may have the potential for fomenting social discord. We are committed to the larger mission of civilizational revival that celebrates religion, tradition, and history. What the hell? Okay. Wait, so they want they want university to just be a propaganda arm for nationalism. The people who are the most insecure about their civilization are fascists. Yeah. Their entire identity is surrounded by entrenching nice. civilizational tradition. Yeah, I mean at, at the expense of societal progress exactly i mean university uh, yeah ex university is supposed to be where you go and question tradition and question um values and narratives that society has forced upon major the majority of people like this is one thing you do this is where you go and get your nationalistic or religious or deeply held beliefs or societal norms all of that is you you go there to get this all challenged if you want to make university where a place where not 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 only these things don't get challenged it gets reinforced then is you, your universities or just becomes another propaganda arm for i don't know fascist and you know if the government's education arm educational um institutions are a place for its own propaganda that is one of the main attributes of fascism because you're not educating people you're brainwashing them booyah is saying i'm just trying to analyze this ethically but is this any different from a professor asking the students to list similarities between muhammad and adolf no it's the same yeah and they should be able to do that it's ridiculous yeah and I just want to point out that Abdullah Samir is agreeing with me and my very good point and saying fascists are deeply insecure. It's quite an irony. Well, I mean, it's, uh, it's an irony because insecure people try to display strength um, a obsessively. lot. Like, obsessively. So that's what makes it ironic. Um, what is this? Oh, yeah, read this one. This is pretty good. Ah, oh, Gaijin American, you're saying it perfectly. He's saying secure civilizations don't need to use force or coercion to propagate. Oof. Juicy. Perfect.
perfect okay, statement. Okay, Oxymoron is saying, Oxymoron is saying, which in which traditions though you cannot question in Indian universities? LOL. Well, we're what you're seeing right now on the screen, <laughs> and the same ones that we're showing, that these are the ones that you can't question, or the ones that we showed last week where somebody was questioning whether Rama was a good guy. Uh, or not, and she got fired. So I don't know what you're laughing about. We're literally showing you the examples. Yeah. Arjun has an interesting point. He says, I don't think that Indians are at a place where they can be secure about their civilization yet. It'll take some time. I think you're right. I mean, it's been like less right. than a hundred years since independence. I mean, that's a generalization about Indians. I don't think- you Yes, should, maybe that should, is a generalization. Yeah, so I think like maybe say many or like maybe adjust that sentence because many Indians are very ready. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah. No, but I mean more broadly, it makes sense that a, a, a country that just got like independence less than a hundred years ago is like experiencing. How do you form your own post colonial post colonial identity? Like that's very real. Yeah, I mean in general, I'm not in favor of collective identities that are not based on um, values that have mm -hmm. high amount of utility. So you don't, the answer is you don't need to go, go for your individual identity or a national identity based on shared values rather than tradition and shared geography and, um, you know, or history or religion. These, these ideas, like how do we build these identities? You don't need to. Don't. They're crap. They have no value. Okay, go for individualism. Yeah, I also just think it, I think it's yeah. so interesting because, like, to me, like, the culture coming out of the subcontinent is just like a it's a global powerhouse, right? So this this intense um, protective like fragility. It's very. It's an interesting contention to me. I'm like, yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, can we clap for the next news? This one looks. Wait, funny. are people saying in the live chat that someone made a donation? Oh, they did. I'm not sure because I don't see it, even though I have it pulled up. Yeah, I don't see it either. It's okay. Well, if someone did, thank you so much. Oh yeah, yeah, secular Sakai. <laughs> just I just saw it. Secular Sakai donated twenty dollars. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, Secular Sakai. And I saw earlier we donated ten dollars. Oh, somebody oh. else did? No, oh, Sakai two did. Times. Two times. Oh, thank you. You That's guys are the thank best. You. <laughs> thank you guys. Sorry right, that we, we didn't notice. We're just so engrossed in our conversation. <laughs> yeah, guys, let us know in the live chat when you see a donation because we don't see it on StreamYard. So please let us know so that we could thank them. Oh, I think there's a bigger one. Okay, sorry, we didn't see that earlier one. Oh my right. god! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Thank you. Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder Armin Abhabi blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.